nice that you are here on the channel. Um, today I just want to make like a little breakdown of the track that I just posted because there was already some question like oh, how you did that channel, how you did that channel and before I make like text like this that if my English is totally impossible, yeah, I just show it to you. Don't forget to start OBS, stand and then let's try this. I got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten channels is always enough. The kick, yeah, the kick actually, um, quite simple, I always use the kick too. Because you can form the envelope really clean and you have some saturation. And you also can uh, mix uh, in a click sound or something. The kick was like... A pattern that I love to use, this like breakbeat pattern, the classic one with the one and the four. And then here in the between we have like on the three. With this you have this rhythm. And the kick, yeah, I build really around having a woody sound. Not too much uh, decay. Quite simple. A little bit of drum bass, a little bit of utility for making it mono. Then I have this like channel where I just like push sometimes a bit of compression and EQ. I love the EQ. Uh, but I will make a um, I will make an extra video about uh, this tool here. So just wait for that one. Um, kick and then bass. Bass is the same. I just using a weird envelope with my kick too system here where i have like a eq and then two lfos the first lfo i didn't map so i can just kill it here and that lfo um i map on 16 rate on 100 hertz so i getting this like you can hear it a bit like And make that full thing a bit groovy and then also like here utility and um, the channel i have everywhere on top now just to use the eq for the percussions i use a perpetuator and then I use like in slice mode a simpler where I just put like just recordings that I use normally for whatever and with the slices he get the transients and slice you some percussions out in a way then you can pitch it here and transpose let me see if I use some modulation here not really yeah and with this percussions I put some accents I have some accents here I use the Valhalla uh, frequency echo for giving some feedback in total then i have the hybrid reverb here that i use and i use some room that beautiful guy here a nice reverb i will make a full video also about all my plugins i actually use now in the end so uh coming soon um delay yeah the echo we never need something else um, and then, yeah, I just play some, in a way, some chords. And uh, with these chords, I got uh, this weird pattern that... So you have a little bit more variation because you just use the arpeggiator this function here, really important, play order. So every time you play and you change uh, the way, what is the first note, you will change the rhythm. So quite cool. Shaker wise, yeah, just the MPC uh, 70s style shaker and I cut a bit the attack here away. So I just have a simple shaker here. You also can see here, it's super heavy in the stereo image, so uh, it gives me the big contrast to the rest. Then um, a clap, 
that happens sometimes. Backward. And then go into my delay and have this hyper reverb with a lot of wetness, like 90%. Actually, I think I will prefer that without. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, melody, good. I use um, the wavetable and an arpeggiator again, play order, and then just play around. My rate is 16 now, but who cares? You just play around and then you have it. And then we have the wavetable synth. Yeah, just use one oscillator and try to use some cool wavetables and uh, play a bit with the filter and the amp envelope and make it really uh, bouncy here then I have my module complex filter bank I mean it's just like two LFOs and some phaser and flanger here and the LFOs just are mapped on the morph so we have this morph function here that morphs I mean if you know my channel, I use this all the time. It gives the best result I need. And then give uh, a nice shiny character uh, with the hybrid reverb again on 50%. And again, my channel script that I have just on every channel. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Yeah, and then the melody. Here you can see the movements. And then reverb and delay and stuff. Then my hypnotic sound. Uh, yeah, let's see. Here yeah, just 16 as MIDI notes and then here I use, yeah, like in my last video, hypnotic bass lines. I use the DS kick, give them saturation as fuck here with the amp and on lead and then pushing a bit. Then phaser to, yeah, I mean, let's, let's break it down. Why not? I mean, that is actually the interesting part here. So why not? First, we just have 16 MIDI notes, and then we push this kick set. So you see, I just use this like weird sound, then a bit of EQing for having like less in this bass area. Then put the amp on top. So we're getting heavy, like distorted sounds that we can nice filter later. Then I put the phaser on top. Gives a hypnotic vibe. And then the filter starting to come in, the first one. And here you can see it's important to have a good filter because the character of the resonance is what makes the sound hypnotic. So, second filter. Then I use a limiter to just uh, bounce the, the heavy peaks that coming sometimes with that heavy uh, modulation. Comes weird stuff sometimes in. I just cut some heavy peaks so I have dynamic. Then I decide with the EQ in a way, in a sound design way, which area I want from this sound that I just created. So I use yeah 100 to 10k and push the highs a bit because they're heavy. Then giving the full thing a character with hybrid reverb. Then the real life is a new plugin that I have 
actually for now no idea what it does. I think it's just a, a wave shaper, but sometimes I just put something on top and I'm like, oh wait, that sounds interesting. And I just keep it. Then uh, my drone channel. Someone asked me already about this one. It's like one long note. <laughs> And it's again just a wavetable, harmonics sign 5, if you're interested. Then I have a long envelope, a long attack on the amp. And the magic, of course, happen again in my filter bank. The same thing as before. Some sidechain here. Yeah, it's, it's really just like trying to get um, a, a sweet spot with the filters where you find this moment where you're like, and you're like, whoa, yes, okay. I mean, it was hard to control this one because you can hear it's like, like this to clip, but you can play always with the waveforms and when you go more to the sinus area, the sound is more clean when you go more to noisy um, frequencies, of course, the sound is more harsh. So with my filters and the sound I get out in the end, it was quite harsh. So I just changed the wavetable again to more sinus-ish thing. And then I got that out, yeah. And the end result with some feedback and hybrid reverb. Then I have some uh, just sample that I have um, with some noise to feel a bit the emptiness and uh, yeah on this one I just have like the channel like always and then here another noise sound that just happens once and then loops over some bars together and let's just do this but all together then we have this beautiful shaker thingy. All the modulation gives me all the time new start points and then I can just play the limbs. Yeah, and this is all I wanted to show you. So uh, yeah, all the channels in a little breakdown, short, small video just to help uh, to answer these questions. Um, you see like most of the time the cool things happen because my filters always have a different start point. So I just can play with really simple four bar loops or something. Uh, but over 16 bars are getting all the time something new out. So it depends more like where I start a sample or how long I keep the loop for having interesting changes. Ch changes? Yeah. I wish you a good New Year's Eve. I think in this time we don't go too crazy, but uh, if you do it, enjoy it. Yes, uh, we see us next year. Have a great night time and daytime.
Bye.